In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get Flutter installed on your computer and get up and running with a basic Flutter app. Then I'm also going to show you how I have my Flutter development environment set up. And this will be using VS Code. So let's get right into it. Firstly, you're going to want to go to docs.flutter.dev. And right here is where you're going to be able to get a great walkthrough of how to install Flutter. So if you click on this get started here, it's going to walk you through a little bit of where you're installing. So I am on a Mac. And then you can also choose the type of app that you want to build. This is just for your first app. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose now. You will probably at some point set up for all four platforms, but I'll go with iOS here. And then now it's going to kind of tell you the requirements and how you can get stuff installed. And I did make a video a few years back about installing Flutter on an M1 Mac. Overall, if you follow these instructions, you should be set up completely on Flutter. And this is the best place to go to get the information. Uh, then you're going to want to get your Visual Studio, or if you want to use one of the other IDEs, you can do that. But Visual Studio is becoming probably the most popular way to develop Flutter apps now. So I would recommend that. I used to use Android Studio, but I have moved over to Visual Studio Code, and I do actually like it much better. Now we can kind of go over to this test drive, and you'll see how you can develop an app. So first we need to actually create a new project. So you can do this within Visual Studio Code or you can do it within the terminal. And I'll kind of show you both ways, but let's go ahead and create it in the terminal first because I do want to show you something in the terminal that's kind of cool. So I just created this project and it's just called Test Drive. So now you can move into the Test Drive project. And now from here, if you want to open it in Visual Studio Code, you can just type code and then a dot. And since you're in this test drive directory, it will open it in Visual Studio Code for you. Now this is a shortcut that isn't necessarily set up by default. So let me show you how you can add that to Visual Studio Code if you don't already have that set up. So you're going to want to open up the command palette and you're going to do that with the shortcut command shift P on a Mac. Or alternatively, you can go to view and then click command palette and the shortcut is right there as well. Once you're in the command palette, you're going to search for shell command, and you're gonna see right here that there is a shell command called install code command in path. And I've already done this, so it says recently used, but you're going to click that, and then it will add that code shortcut. So if before you tried to type this and it said code not found, or basically it didn't work, Go ahead and try it again, and you might actually just need to restart your terminal because it has updated the path. So probably close out of your terminal, open it back up, go back to your test drive, and then type code open. And this is super handy because you don't have to go find the file in your file system. You can just do it directly from the terminal. So now I'm going to show you the plugins that I use in VS Code, and I will link all these below. However, I do have them installed here. I just have them kind of turned off. So I'm going to turn them back on as I explain them. So the first one is this out of one dark. And when I enable this and then set color theme to out of one dark, you'll see the color of my background it turns to a little bit slightly of a gray. This is kind of the one I prefer. There are obviously a ton of different ones of code formatting you can use, but this kind of has become my favorite. You can see this is what it looks like. A lot of people have asked me which one I use in other videos, so that is it right there. I'm using this package, this Atom1 Dark. Next, I add this Better Comments, and this is going to change kind of the way some of these comments look. So you can see right now, if we wanted this comment to be highlighted in red, because this is a, let's say, a, a big warning or something, or we wanted a just a note, or we wanted a question here, they all look the same. So if we go ahead and enable this better comments, and I'll go ahead and enable that there. When we go back now, you'll see these are kind of highlighted a little bit differently, which lets them stand out nicely, especially this red one. This also works for your to-do, which will turn orange. Next is this error lens, and it kind of shows you what it's doing right here, but let's say we have an error in our code here, and let's say we just typed this wrong. So you can see the error is underlined here. And also in Visual Studio Code, you can find the error down here. If you go under problems, you'll see the error. 
But with this error lens, if you enable it and you go back, you're going to see the error now right here, which is pretty useful if you're coding and you see something right here and you can just scroll over and immediately read what this error is without going down here. Same exact error, but uh, just showing up there is kind of nice. Next one is going to be Flutter itself, which this one will install both Flutter and Dart. This is going to help with the auto formatting and just make your Flutter code highlight properly. So you definitely want to have the Flutter package there. Uh, Dart is another one that should probably already be enabled. When you add the Flutter one, it's probably going to add the Dart one automatically. The last one that I use is Flutter RiverPod snippets. This one you only need if you're going to use RiverPod, but it is kind of useful if you have some RiverPod code that you're generating, kind of auto generates some stuff for you. This one is probably the least important of all of them and I probably don't use it as much, but the other stuff I showed you is definitely what I do to set up my development environment in Visual Studio Code. These things definitely make the development experience a little bit nicer, especially with the commenting here and even the colors and everything. So it is nice to have that. One last thing you're going to want to do if you are installing Flutter for the first time is you're going to want to run that Flutter doctor. And this is in the documentation as well. But within here, you should be able to see kind of all these check boxes here and how everything has been installed correctly. Uh, I can also open an iOS simulator and just run this test app. And let's get this running. If you go over here and your simulator is selected down here, then you can hit run and debug. Although sometimes it does get confused and you need to pick from the list here. And if you do have multiple simulators open, you are gonna to wanna to click on this Dart and Flutter and then all your simulators are gonna be right here. So this is the iPhone 15 Pro, so I'll select that. And then I'll click Run, which it is already trying to run that one. But that's how you can kind of switch between the different simulators uh, when running it directly from VS Code. We can go back now to our output here of Flutter Doctor and you can see everything is pretty much checked off and good. The only error I have here is with my iPad that I have and basically it's saying that this isn't going to be accessible but that's expected. I don't actually want to run this on my iPad right now so that's fine but there you go. You can see the app is running and it's just that simple counter app. So hopefully this video helps you make your development environment a little bit nicer and if you have any questions with installing Flutter or run into any errors or if there's something that is set up on my device that you aren't seeing on your device, let me know down in the comments and I will do my best to try and help you out.